Is this you? Ah! I just bought this retro handheld and everyone said it was super easy, but it's so confusing. I've been at this for hours and I don't know what to do and everything I try goes bad and all I want to do is play some old retro games, but I feel like I wasted my money on this thing and also I'm hungry because I don't have any chips. And if that is you, then I bet you wish that this was you. Oh look, a new Android handheld. Let me just pop in this SD card, install this and this, point this to my games and there we go. Only took me a few minutes and now I have all my games and my front end all set up and ready to rock. And also I have chips. So today I'm going to show you how I set up my Android emulation devices, my personal method that I use on all these things that is quick and easy. So watch this to learn how you can go from this. Ah, what do you mean I don't have a BIOS? What even is a BIOS to this? Haha, <laughs> yeah, burger time is awesome. Almost as awesome as these chips. Hey there, how you doing? I'm TechTweeb, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. Almost every time I show an Android emulation doodad in a video, I explain that the stock system kind of sucks, so I just set it up the way that I like using my personal Android emulation setup method. And whenever I do, I always get a ton of questions about how I do it. This will be a bit of a drier video and not, not as many jokes and not much goofing around. So let's get all the sillies out of our system right now and get our learning hats on because I'm going to show you my method for setting up Android emulation devices from start to finish. And at the end, I'll show you how I take this same setup between devices to make it quicker and easier. So without further dilly-dallying, as my mom would say, let's go over this whole process one step at a time. Starting with the first step, which I call step one. Step one is you'll want to install your emulators. You can log into Google Play and use the Play Store to find some of these, but you don't need to because all of them are available as APK files that you can download and sideload. You'll want to install RetroArch for the older stuff, everything up to like PS1, Saturn, Nintendo DS, and Dreamcast, and you can use standalone emulators for any of those systems if you have preferences. Like I said, this is what I do, so that's what I'm going to share here. And you'll want Dolphin for GameCube, Lime 3DS for 3DS, and PPSSPP for PSP. I will have links for all of those available in the doodad below. However, I won't have links for Nether SX2 for PS2 because that requires you to patch Aether SX2, so you can search for that yourself. And I use Sudachi for Nintendo Switch, although I can't tell you where to get that because I'm scared Nintendo will murder someone close to me if I do. So just hit up Google for that. Once you have them all downloaded, go ahead and install each APK, but don't bother launching them yet. We'll, we'll do that after we set up the front end. Speaking of which, now we need to install our front end, which is going to be ESDE, which stands for Emulation Station Desktop Edition. There are other front ends available like Daijisho and Dig, but in my opinion, there's no reason to use any other front end now that Emulation Station is on Android. ESDE is not a free app. You need to buy it. You can get it from a few places, but I suggest you use the Patreon option. You can pay five bucks and you'll get access to the Android APK and future updates. You uh, you don't have to stay a Patreon supporter forever. Uh, just pay once and cancel if you want, and you'll get emailed about updates and get the download for the latest version in your email. Once you have the installer APK, go ahead and install that. Now, real quick, before we set up ESDE, let's decide where we're going to put our ROMs. ESDE automatically creates directories on your device, but if you want to use an SD card to store your stuff, now is the time you should set that up. This is what I do. I have my Android emulation stuff on an SD card that I can swap between devices so I get all my games and my game lists on any device and it makes setting up devices a breeze. However, today, for, for uh, completeness, I'm going to be starting fresh. So I'll pop in a fresh SD card and I'll do that Android thing where you got to choose what kind of storage it is. So select portable storage. And now we can launch ESDE. When you launch it for the first time, you'll have a quick little setup to go through. Here you'll need to give storage permission, so do that, and then you'll need to select your data directory. And if you're using your internal storage, just click the allow access button on the bottom. But since I'm setting this up on an SD card, I'm going to use the menu in the top left and choose my SD card. And then on the root level of the card, I'm going to use the dot menu on the top right to make a new folder. And this should be called ES-DE. 
and then click done and then click allow access. Next, we need to do the same thing for the ROMs folder. Click select directory and use the hamburger menu to choose your SD card and then make a new folder called ROMs and then uh, allow access. And then finally here, it'll ask us if we want to create system directories. We do want to do this since we don't have them yet. So click create them and then you'll be taken to ESDE. And then it'll ask you if you want to create the directories again. And you can just go to quit here because we already did that and we don't have any games yet. At this point, we're going to go ahead and set up RetroArch because we need it to make the folder where we're going to put our BIOS. And uh, we'll just set the whole dang thing up while we're in here too. So when you launch RetroArch for the first time, you'll get an initial setup. Grant read and write permission and then you should be able to use the controls on your device to control the menu and stuff because it'll automatically detect your controls. However, I think it's a good thing to do to just manually set up your controls so you don't get any weird inputs if the, de uh, the defaults aren't correct. So go to the settings in RetroArch, go down to input and then retro pad binds, port one controls and in here you can set analog to digital as the left analog and then go down to set all controls and follow the prompts to set, set your controls. And when that's done, you can go to save controller profile. Next, I'm going to set up my hotkeys. So back out to the input menu, go down to hotkeys. And in here, we need to choose a button for the, the hotkey uh, toggle. If your device has a hotkey button, you can use that. But nine times out of 10, I just prefer to use the select button. Set it to whatever you want, though. And then you'll go through and set each of your hotkeys. I won't walk you through all of them. I'll just put them on the screen so that you can see what I like to use. This is my personal preference, but use whichever you like. I'm not here to tell you what to do, apart from subscribing to TechDweeb, of course. When you're done setting up your controls, you can back out of this menu back to input. And then one more thing that I like to do is disable confirm quit so that I only have to press my exit hotkey once. And then the next thing that you'll want to do now that we have our hotkeys is disable the on-screen overlay. That's under user interface, on-screen overlay, and you can turn off the display overlay. And then while we're here in the user interface menu, I like to go to appearance and you can change the scale factor to make your menus bigger if you want to. And then I like to pick a color scheme. This usually depends on the device I'm using because I kind of like to choose this to match the colors of the device. This one that I'm using today is the RP Mini, which is orange and black. So I'll go with cutie orange, I think. Next up, we need to configure the saving settings. Head to the saving section of the settings, and in here you can leave everything as default, but I like to enable auto save state and auto load state, and increment save state automatically so that I can go back to previous save states if needed. We're almost done. Well, just one more thing. This is where you'll want to enable retro achievements. So head over to the achievements section of the settings, enable that, and then put in your retro achievements username and password. And make sure you turn off hardcore mode because that prevents you from using save state unless you want to do that. And that's it for settings, but there's one more important thing that must be done, which is to download the emulation cores that you'll be using. So head out to the main menu and down to online updater, core downloader, and in here you can go through and download the specific cores that you need for emulation. And you can pick and choose which ones you want, but if you're lazy, you can just freaking download every single core because they don't actually take long to download or take up much space. So just get your tappy fingers going and go on a download spree. I find this is actually quicker than going through through and picking and choosing the cores. Oh, and sometimes if you do this too fast, you'll get some stuck progress bars, which is fine because we're actually done. So the last step is to back out to the main menu, go down to configuration file and choose save current configuration. And then you can exit RetroArch because we're done with that. We're not gonna be able to do anything yet because we haven't added our BIOS files in our games. So let's do that. You can uh, get your games into the correct folder on your device however you want. You can download stuff right on your device or you can plug it into your PC and copy stuff over. But since I set this up with an SD card, I'm just gonna pop that into my computer to access the folder. And there we go. There's the content of my SD card. Now now there's two things that we're going to want to do. First, I'm going to add my games. Open up the ROMs folder and in here you'll see a ton of folders for various systems. Each of these folders represents a game system. So SNES for Super Nintendo, GBA for Game Boy Advance, Genesis for Sega Genesis, that sort of thing. Go ahead and add all your legal retro game backups to these folders. The next thing that we want to do is add our BIOS files to the SD card. I'm not going to tell you where to download a RetroArch BIOS pack or the BIOS files for PS2 or whatever. 
you're on your own for that. But adding them to the SD card is a nice, easy way to get them onto the device. So make a BIOS folder on the root level of the card and copy your RetroArch BIOS pack into there. If there's other BIOS files that you need beyond this, you can download them on the device as you need them. When you're done adding your ROMs and BIOS files, you can eject that from your PC and pop it back into your doodad. And then one last step that uh, I'll need to do here is to move the BIOS files to the RetroArch BIOS directory. So open your file browser, navigate to the BIOS folder on your SD card, click the dot menu and choose select all. And then in that menu, select copy to, and now you'll navigate to the storage on your device, go into the RetroArch folder and then system, and then click copy to create a copy of those files in here. If you swipe Swipe down from the top menu, you can check on the progress. It, it may look like it'll take forever, but it'll speed up. Mine took about two minutes. And the next step is to launch each emulator and go through their initial setup and make sure they all work. Each one is different and I'm not going to be able to go deep on the details uh, for each one because I already did that for RetroArch and each of these additional emulators uh, could kind of be its own separate video, really. But I'll give you two examples with GameCube and PS2. In Dolphin, you'll want to add the directories for your GameCube games and your Wii games using the button at the bottom and navigating to the ROM directories. And then you'll need to set up the controller. This uh, emulator doesn't have predefined controls. You gotta do it yourself. It's kind of complicated for the Wii, so I'm not going to get into that, but for GameCube, just click the gear, go to the GameCube input, and click the gear icon beside the top GameCube controller, and then go through and say your controls. When you're done, launch a game so that you know it works. For Nether SX2, go through the welcome stuff. You'll need to add a BIOS file here, which you can find online super quick if you search. I'm not going to give it to you, so don't ask. Add a few of the BIOS files until you find a USA BIOS or whichever region that you want. Add your game directory and then one last step is to go to the uh, menu at the top and go to controller settings, controller port one, and then use the automatic mapping feature. You can uh, come back here and remap stuff later if you need to. Then launch a game and make sure that it works. Go ahead and turn off the touchscreen controls or whatever other changes that you want. And th that's the basics. Just set up the, each emulator the way that you want. Make sure that they work on their own so that when you launch games through ESDE, you won't have any issues. And now we've done all the hard work. Uh, we've set up all the emulators, added our games, and the final step is to launch ESDE and test it all out. This is freaking awesome because it all just works. ESDE should now be populated with your games. You can browse your games and launch your games. The RetroArch game should launch through RetroArch. Your hotkey should work so you can open the menu and save and load your state and exit the game. It'll automatically save your game and load back the next time that you launch that game. Even your complex stuff like PS2 games should launch fine. Really, it'll, it'll just work. And if it doesn't, you can play around with some of the settings in ESDE. Yeah, you can choose alternate emulators if you want switch between your standalone emulators and RetroArch. And obviously you can do other stuff like download new themes to customize the look of your front end, scrape your box art. I should probably make a dedicated ESDE video at some point to show you all the fun little tricks that it can do. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd want to see. But I told you at the start that this is how I personally set up my Android devices. So let me show you what happens when I pop my actual card in. This is my card. It's a 512 gigabyte silicon power SD card. This is my favorite brand of card. A great quality for the price. I'll include a link in the doodad below if you want to pick one of these up. So I'll just pop this into my handheld. Real quick, I'll show you that in my downloads folder, I have the APK files for all my emulators, so I don't need to re-download those on any device. I got them all here. I have my BIOS folder full of everything that I need. And when I launch ESDE with this in there, it'll treat it as a fresh setup. So I'll select the ESDE folder on my card and the ROMs folder on the card, skip the directories, and boom, look at that. I have my entire game library ready to rock. All my favorites lists are here, all my games, all the box art is scraped. The games have descriptions and ratings because I scraped all that stuff. This is why I love ESDE. Because once you have it set up on one device, all you need to do when you get a new device is move the SD card over and, and point it to the right directory. Yeah, there's a bit of setup because you need to reinstall all the emulators and set up RetroArch each time, but it really doesn't take long to do that part. I can usually get a fresh Android device ready to go within about 20 minutes or so using this method. It turns a painful slog of setting up a device into a pretty quick thing, and it makes it so that I can focus on playing games and having fun rather than having to deal with m missing BIOSes and scraping box art for the 800th time. And th that's it. That's, that's all I have to show you today. This should be all the information 
info you need and the steps that you can follow along with. There might be a few odd things that don't work right away. Maybe some standalone emulators require a special way to set them up or something. So please let me know in the comments if there's anything that you need to know that this guide does not explain. And I'll make a point to answer it in a future video. But as for this video, click the thumbs up button if you liked it, or don't if you didn't. That's it from me. I'm TechDweeb, thanks for watching. Bye bye.